I just made a mistake. I accidentally grabbed two of the female contacts here. So these ones go both into a male plug. But I have a female plug here because we want to connect to the most positive on the other side there. And you actually cannot get the female contact into a female plug. It just doesn't work. So you cannot even do it wrong. Okay, I'll keep this cable then for another connection for this string over there. And don't forget to put some kind of labels or something on your cables here. Otherwise you're ending up with four black cables coming out of your conduit here and you don't know which one is which anymore. So what I'm doing is I just take a white marker here and put a white minus on it. And this means negative of the first string. And the other cable will get a positive symbol. And then string number two will get two negative symbols. And two positives as well, respectively. And I highlight them on three different locations here on the cable. I don't know how much I will cut off. So if you cut off your labeling, <laughs> it doesn't help either. So I'll do it three times on the cable here on this length, just to make sure I can later recognize, identify the cable easily. That's just me, you know, this is my system. And so if you want to put some post-its on it or something or identify them some, somehow else, that's totally fine. So this work here on the roof took only five minutes. We've got the most positive contact here cabled and the most positive of this string as well. And they're both running down. We need to feed them through the roof, put some markers on there down in the garage and then we are done. As I said before, for safety reasons, don't connect any panels in series right now. Leave this all as it is until we are ready to get this done. So, and there we have it. We've got all the cables pushed through it is a little bit tight now with the fourth cable now i should have gone with the um with the larger conduit actually this one is a 20 millimeter and i've got a 25 millimeter here as well and uh, would have been easier to push this through but eventually i got it through so there's nothing else going through this conduit anymore this is the full capacity now and as you can see i've got these labeled now and we can easily identify this is the string number two negative, string number two positive, and the same accordingly here. So very easy to identify later down the track. But you know, this is, this is just me, how I do it. You will develop your own system and do whatever you need to do to identify your cables when you pull them through. Well guys, this was my initial idea to have these terminal blocks here uh, for my incoming cables from the solar panels, but I haven't got the right sizes. These are tiny cables here, one millimeter max. And I've got four millimeter cables, so they don't they don't fit. Oh, actually, no, they don't they don't fit in here. And I think it's a bit over the top, but you know, I'm, I'm a switchboard guy. There are terminals everywhere from all kinds of sides. This is just how you build a switchboard, you know, but if I would have them in the right size, I would actually do it. But in this case, I'm cabling everything through the fuse holders directly. So all our incoming cables go in in one side and then we've got the other cables going from here into the charge controller. And this will be my terminal plug, so to speak. Well, and if you have seen these ones before here, they are actually from Sprecher and Schuh, made in Germany. Just putting in these anchors here at the end to compress them together. Oh, 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 I said it. The C word. Now they are not compressed. This is just a fixture. So no compression. All right, guys, we are done. <laughs> and a frog. <laughs> okay, I have now well, I have now cabled our solar panels here. 
Are you kidding me? I didn't do any noise at all during the last half an hour and now I'm start filming. By the way, I cannot show you the frog because they are living inside the downpipe in the gutter somewhere. Well, we've got the positive and negative of string number one and the positive and negative of string number two here. I have put them on separate fuses, which is absolutely not necessary. But this is just me again wanting to have some terminal blocks here where I can actually... This is my incoming cables here and then we've got the outgoing cables and they're going in a loop down here into the, the solar charge controller straight away. It is not necessary to have a fuse in your positive and in your negative at the same time. One fuse is enough for one string. This is just me again being being me, you know, switchboard guy, terminals, love them. Well, and then we've got uh, future stuff here for the other solar panels going on the roof pointing to the west. And this all can be wired up to the solar charge controllers on this side here. We've got the inverter down here. And I'm getting far too excited about all that. Okay, let's go back to the roof and connect the solar panels. And then we can measure if we have 150 volt here on these terminals. All right. And here we are back on the roof. I tell you what, this gap here comes now in very handy here. I can, I can easily lie on my roof here, so like this and can work under these panels. And I'm so glad we lifted these ones up here with these extenders. So there's so much room now here to work with these cables. It is so great. I'm super happy with this one. So far the decision is good. Just wait for the next storm. <laughs> and the whole shit flies away here. So this is my connector coming from the top panel. And this is a female, so we need the male of the next panel. Plug them together. Bang. This is all good. And then we've got the female of the middle panel. And we connect this one with the male. See now we've got this female here from the, um, from the middle panel. And this is the male from the bottom one. Plug them together until they click in. Done. All right, so far the electrical installation on, on the roof. And I'll do the same on this side here as well. And then we have to use the cable ties and put these cables away from the roof underneath. And you just, you just take cable ties. Grab all these cables and then tie them up to the rail system here of your solar panels. So they are away from the roof. And you do this a couple of times along the way to keep them all organized. And that's pretty much it. So very easy to do, very safe to do. We have now 150 volts down there in the, in the switchboard where the fuse holders are. So we will just go down and measure this now quickly and see if we are lucky with panel with string number one and if this all works as designed. I'm excited now. Right, so string number one, pushing this one in, this one in, close, close. So we should have 150 volt DC on these two terminals now. I've organized here and we will have zero. That's good. Push this on DC. Always starts on AC. It's a pain in the bum, really. And let's see, 96, 96 volts we have. Well, there's no sun. That's totally fine. Yeah, it's not even 150. I can't remember what was the open circuit voltage of these panels. I think they are only 34-ish. I took a picture of the sticker underneath, so. I think it was like 38 or so open circuit voltage times three is 120 something. We've got no sun anymore outside. 95.5 and polarity is correct. So my friends, I think we are done. So I used some cable zip ties to attach the cables to the rail system up there. So it's off the roof. 
I have sealed all the cable entries here, I've sealed the pipe here. Well, in Australia, otherwise you have creepy crawlers in there and stuff and they're building homes and starting a family and everything. You have to seal everything here, all these little gaps, seal them. So this is all done, this is all cable tied together and the same on the other side. You can see there are my cables anymore. So this is all perfectly done. And um, we have to measure, we have to confirm the voltage of this one. But as you can see, the, the sun is, I mean, this is just ridiculous, right? There's almost no sun anymore. So let's see what we get. The fuses. So I'm using 10 amp fuses here. That says 10 amps. Because the solar panels, they deliver only 5.2 or something. And we've got them all in serious connection, so 5.2 will stay. Okay, okay, plus, minus, yeah, 94 volts. So this is all good. Excellent. I just realized I have never shown you the footage of when we mounted the solar panels on top of the roof here. Yeah, I don't know. I never made a video out of it. It was just a short sequence of us mounting the solar panels and everything and get this all organized. But it wasn't really worth making a video out of it, so I put it in here. And, well, guys, we are now done. We've got the two strings, 660 watts each, connected to our new electric enclosure here in the off-grid garage. We've got two fuses in there per string, which is not necessary. You need only one fuse, regardless the negative or a positive cable and the next step will be to mount the solar charge controller somewhere on the right hand side there and then cable this one to the fuses and of course we still have to build the battery hashtag build the battery well i'm already building the battery i've got everything connected here in parallel and charging this bank up this is 4480 ampere hours <laughs> And I also ran out of bus bars, so I needed to use this alligator. I always say crocodile clips, but it's an alligator because we don't have alligators here in Australia. We've got crocodiles, but no alligators. So I used these crocodile clips here to connect all the cells together now, and they are happily charging for a couple of days now. And they will be charging for another couple of days, I think, <laughs> until they are full. All right, guys. As always, thank you so much for all your support here and thank you for all your comments here. Hundreds, thousands of comments on all these videos. It is amazing. I'm trying to reply to as many as possible, but it's just, but I'm just running out of time, you know? So thank you again for all your support here and all your comments. And I guess we shall see us again in the next video coming out very soon. So we're getting closer and closer and closer. I'm super excited about this project. I hope the battery stacks up and everything works eventually. I have no idea if it will. Okay, guys, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.